Throughout our history, we've heard the word racism more than once. We people judge others based on the color of our skin. We talk about racism, we talk about injustice, cruelty, and fear. It sounds horrible, but is there a problem with it? Next, a short description of the situation. In 2005, when stopped by a police officer in South Carolina for having a broken brake light, surveillance cameras saw Walter Scott get out of his car and run. The six meter away, police officer Michael Slager decided to shoot him eight deadly shots in the back, arguing it was in self-defense. In 2012, 18-year-old Trayvon Martin was returning to his father's home outside Orlando, Florida. A security guard at the condominium called the police to report a suspicious person, so he went out to confront him and then shot him in the chest. The young man died 60 meters away from his home. In July 2016, Philandro Castilla was in his vehicle with his girlfriend and his four-year-old daughter when he was pulled over for a traffic control in Minnesota. It took just 14 seconds for the police officer to fire seven shoots at Castilla as he thought he was pulling a gun out of his pocket. The woman transmitted the facts after thinking she was also going to die. So yes, it is a problem, and it is our problem. In this project, we're going to walk a large path through different concepts that are trying to make us understand the science behind racism. These are some of the questions we have. Does race actually play a role in biology? What makes people think this way? Is there any psychological background in racist thoughts? What do all these cases have in common? Prejudice, racism, and discrimination of law enforcement officers with their black-skinned citizens. In the United States, black people have more than twice the possibility of being shot dead by a police officer than white people. A 2015 CNN poll found out that about 49% of Americans think that racism is a big problem that doesn't seem to get any better. 65% of African American people say they had experienced some form of social discrimination in their lifetimes. Also, Black and Hispanic reported to be far more likely than whites to be unfairly treated in a public place. But is there such a thing as race? In the middle of the 18th century, an American scientist named Samuel Morton screwed up. Morton invented the theory of polygyny, based on the idea that humans are not only members of different races, but also different species. These species were separated since the beginning, and they had different characteristics that were systematic and in their DNA. Now, here's where Morton really screwed up. This scientist used to have a big collection of human skulls and he would affirm that the mental capacity of humans was directly connected with the volume of a school. A big school would mean high intelligence, and a smaller one, a reduced mental capacity. So it is that Caucasian skills were placed really high on the pyramid of intellect, leaving black people at the base of it. This idea was followed by anyone that wanted to defend slavery in those times, being Morton's theory the perfect excuse. Morton was the father of scientific racism. Now, speaking in biological terms, race doesn't exist between humans. Traditionally, scientists have used races to refer to subspecies. What distinguish a subspecies from a species varies only among the taxa, a biological classification based on certain categories. But in humans, there are no distinct genetic boundaries for the groups commonly called races. And humans have only 0.1% variation within our species, so there is a genetic variation within and between populations, but it's quite small, and the most amount of genetic variation found within our species isn't between those of European and African ancestry, it's between various populations within Africa. This is called reduced genetic diversity. Scientists refer to races as populations or ethnic groups, and many of the physical characteristics that are associated with race, like the skin color, nose shape and height, are due to adaptations to climate and the environment. These slight differences are called clients. We don't have races, we have racism. Now a short experiment. After having investigated racism and its reason for existing, we found the experiment by a teacher called Jane Elliott in 1968. 
This experiment wanted to demonstrate to her studies how discrimination and separation by races, making one group feel superior than another, was unfair. In this experiment, she separated her studies in the class by their eye color, blue or brown. Those who had blue eyes would enjoy certain privileges like having longer breaks. On the other side, those with brown eyes were told that they were inferior to the rest of the class, and because of that they wouldn't have any privilege. They had a little mark, so the rest of the class could identify them easily. Several confrontations took place between students who were friends. Also, academically, the ones with privileges got better results in different tasks than the others. The next day, the teacher changed the rules. The ones with blue eyes were now the inferior ones and the other way around. Now, those who had brown eyes had better results than those with blue eyes and also the privileges they didn't have the past day. This experiment wanted to demonstrate to the students the importance of not discriminating against others for their biological traits such as skin color or the eye color. Also to show the importance of not dividing people into races, science, At the end of the day, we all belong to the same race, the human race. 15 years later, the same students meet with their teacher and talk about the experiment. Those students confirmed the impact it had had on them on that time, and how it changed their way of seeing racism. Understanding this, what leads us to be racist? Over the years, and even today, our society has followed and created a bunch of racial prejudice. Black people are criminals, African American single mothers are lazy, etc. Racial prejudice assumes that something we think to be true about a group of people applies to every single member of the particular group. These prejudices are stuck in our minds, making us almost unconsciously judge these people instantly, without having any proof at all. These preconceptions often take the form of stereotypes that leads to racism. We think that there are races that are inferior to ours, so we treat those people like shit. And here we begin to talk about biases. What is a bias? A bias is an inclination for or against one group, especially in a way to be considered unfair. We are aware of the explicit biases, however, the implicit ones are those little inclinations we have that we don't even identify. We can think we are not racist, but our unconsciousness might not tell us the same. So, in our minds, meanwhile, our biases make us discriminate, giving place to a constant cycle. We start by following our biases, conscious or unconsciously. We start discriminating. The second stage is the disadvantage we put these people on, social disadvantage. And this lower stage in society makes us believe that there is actually something that has to do with race. This group really is inferior. I mean, he's not having the same job as me. He's gaining less money. And so it is, we justify the initial prejudice, making this cycle able to be repeated. The scapegoat theory, also known as the frustration-aggression theory, gives us another explanation to racism. This theory frames prejudices as a defense mechanism on the part of frustrated people, who blame the people on another more disadvantaged group to deal with their own problems. So there we have a quick view over what actually goes on on a racist person's mind. So, after investigating this exciting topic, we can say a change must be made. Talking, making people conscious about how discrimination and racism are affecting our society will help for sure. We should also pay attention to the scientific fact that we all belong to the same one race, the human race. Schools could maybe start by teaching children not to discriminate and explain to them that your biological traits, such as your skin color, do not define you as a person. Change starts by educating people. 
we must stop discriminating and we must treat people with kindness, not hate. Thank you very much.